very, um, very excited to introduce our next um, guest here, Gisela Voss, and this is her first time attending JumpCon. Right. Um, right. Very cool. So how did um, this kind of pull on that 
run a little bit more. How did your work end up shaping what the design team in marketing ended up doing? Not just with Jen, but in general, within the projects you worked on. I don't know that we shaped the storylines as much. I think there was a lot of conversations. Actually, I take it back. I think the storyline about the orphanage got shaped by mom's reactions because it good washed over a lot of the concerns moms had about their daughters. I, mean, I think it's more accepting today. Right? I mean, I think there's six-year-olds walking around with green hair and the whole rock world on the tail of Madonna's like a virgin and the pointy bra thing and the painted hair and the boy with purple hair was not accepted then. Uh -huh. So by flipping a little bit of the goodness, but she's doing so much good, mm -hmm. helped at least in, I mean, we were doing research not just in New York and LA, right? Remember I was telling John Henry, we were doing focus groups in Alabama, we were doing focus groups in Topeka, Kansas, Moms were freaked out, truthfully. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you want my daughter to do what? And the girls were seeing the TV show and they wanted it, but there was still, like, moms to hold the purse strings. Right. You know, um, I like to know a little bit to years later, mom saying, really, you like the doll going called Bratz? <laughs> so, I mean, I think to that extent, we shaped a little bit of where the storyline was going. Um, yeah. Yeah, I so what was what was the initial feedback then on Jen and how did it compare to Barbie? There was a lot of positive feedback from a body image standpoint, right? If you took the colored hair off and you just handed moms the dolls, um, I don't remember the proportions of what Barbie would be if she was an adult. Like, she like, like fall over. 34, 24, 34, 34 or something, or 38, 24, 38. She'd fall over, she had those toes. So um, it's funny to discuss this on the tail of the movie. Um, <laughs> moms really liked that Jem was more proportional, more normal. I remember that word. And yet, there was that dichotomy between like she's more normal, but she's not normal, right? Like you made her more physically normal, and yet her personality is not some, not whatever, whatever moms nationwide wanted to say. Obviously, Hasbro gave it the wrong way, right? The 30 minute it was also a time of the FCC. There was lots of conversations about both with My Little Pony and with G.I. Joe with Transformers. There were at first not rules about 30 minute commercials, which in essence, so we could pay the ad agency millions of dollars to create 30 second spots, or we could produce a 30 minute commercial and call it a cartoon and have the kids want it even more. So before the FCC got involved in rules about that, we were testing, like, watching cartoons versus watching commercials. and. Kids would much rather have the storyline mm -hmm. and the background and mm -hmm. then be told them not. Um, that, makes, um, that makes sense. And I know you said that the feedback initially with Jem, it was a little split because even though Jem, the storyline was about the orphanage and the Starlight Girls and there were good intentions in this community relations tie-in, but a lot of moms maybe just focus on the rock star image, but then you said with Barbie, it's like, oh, she's a nurse, or she's an astronaut, or it's multiple, multiple packages almost that Barbie, or identities that Barbie could, you That's know, what I remember mom saying. Like, yeah. Jim is only a rock star, and you've given her only that one vibe, which, which needed to happen for the, for the storyline and for the cartoon. They did say, this is informed by the movie now, right? But they did say Barbie allowed girls this whole, long before, honestly, girls, from a feminist standpoint, Barbie was an astronaut and a police officer long before women were astronauts and police officers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm saying that now from the vantage point of today, not right. from the vantage point of 25-year-old working at Hasbro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But I do remember mom saying, but Barbie can be all these things. She's a blind canvas. You've limited Jim mm -hmm. to something I'm not comfortable with because she's a rock star and she's painting her hair and I don't want my daughter dressing that way. I mean, girls didn't dress that way then to go to school. Now I watch the kids at the bus stop and they're all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a dress ahead of her time. Way ahead of her time. Way. Holograms were ahead of her time. She was pre-Hannah Montana. Yeah. She, it was a brilliant storyline and I, mean, I think I was talking to John Henry about it. I don't think she failed for any of those reasons because girls wanted her. Yeah. And we did the research with girls, girls wanted her. I believe ultimately Jim, Jim stopped because we made a mistake. In fact, I think we made this mistake at the back of the day. We, um, I think the storyline would have lasted, I think the cartoon would have lasted, I think the doll would have lasted, I think the book would have gotten over. MTV was all over, I think we would have made it just fine. Even Madonna calmed down a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think that, and I remember visiting stores nationwide where we came out with this. Like, like, Toys R Us was the only game in town, no pun intended. There was no Target, there was no Amazon, and I don't remember how many stores, I should have looked this up, but let's say it's a thousand Toys R Us nationwide. And they've got decades of Barbie set up for X height shelf. All the metal shelves and stores nationwide are set up. And now comes this doll, and I'm a store employee, and here comes this. And in all the stores the market research department visited, Barbie was stacked like pizza boxes. Jen was stacked like, Jen was stacked like pizza Barbie boxes was like because stuff. Barbie was standing. Because the shelf did not allow this box height. Yeah, I think we were made a stupid mistake. Yeah. Clever down. Yeah. She can lay down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So do you think then, and part of that was to highlight the wonderful artwork that Sharon and Tell did, but do you think, and you know, hindsight's 2020, do you think, and I know in the second year line we redid the packaging to kind of remove that, but obviously but she was still too t the box was still too oh, tall. Oh, the box was still too tall. The box, because the doll is taller. The doll is taller. I remember conversations about we would have to retool the whole thing. We would have to, every mold, every everything, everything would have to be retooled. And we didn't consider hand me downs from older sisters to younger sisters. Girls, those girls that we stuck in that room playing with the dolls together had all of Barbie fashions could not be put on gem dolls. So all the hand me downs, all the existing product out there did not fit her. Interesting. So even if we didn't have that side sleeve with the shelf facing yeah, horizontally, it's still a vertical issue. It was a vertical height issue. That's, that's interesting. That's so I'm wondering, hypothetically, if we had, if your team had re, just even still kept. I'm wondering if there was like a hybrid. You had the body still more accurate, but not so tall to where it would impact the shelf placement, if that was like a sweet spot, you know. Like we discussed those. including more clothes with the doll so that she automatically would come with more fashions so mm -hmm. that you didn't have to already have your sister's or your cousin's Barbie clothes, right? If obviously cost was an issue. Mm -hmm. If you just put more clothes in there with her, um, you would have more things to exchange. Mm -hmm. But I, I, in my gut, I believe she would have succeeded if the only retailer that was selling toys at the volume at which it was selling didn't come back and say, we just want to lay your pizza boxes down. That's interesting. And we've seen some of them, like the sales kits and that kind of thing, the licensing kits, where it shows the plan grand displays and, you know, end caps. And there's only so much real estate to go around. This was before, like you said. Well, Amazon. end caps can be sized to whatever you want. But when you want to be on the doll aisle, Mm -hmm. Nobody was going to change the shelf height for Jim. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. We're gonna. Um, I see we have some questions, but we're gonna hold that um, just towards the end because we do have questions. Um, just the mic. Yep. I can't see the questions without my glasses, so it's just me. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no, it's all good. Um, so that's interesting then. And then, um, so any, I guess, other details or thoughts on how your team. Um, interacted with the other departments with design, R and D, marketing, anything? There was a lot of back and forth. There was the like 
Yeah. We make the car. Does it have, you know, have, do we want the car to be the cassette tape or do we want to have a boom box and the car? There was like, there was a prototype car that didn't have the cassette. There was a boom box that had the cassette. Again, those decisions were made above me and maybe, again, by the Toys R Us planogram saying so many decisions. I'm telling you this just even from my, my world in Target. So many decisions are predicated by the planogram. I bet there was some meeting in which Toys R Us said, we're going to give you one space on the shelf for one big thing. Choose. Boombox or box? Boombox or car? Mm. And that's, that's speculation on my part, but there, if you only have 12 linear feet, you can't have two big boxes. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Any, um, I guess on that thought too, did your team provide input into um, sales prices? Uh, like what moms would be willing to Not my team. The, okay. the quantitative team definitely did statistical analysis on like, let's do a fake shopping experience and how many, like, should just be 9 9 but to us, rest of the prices. Interesting. Interesting. So um, your team did get, did your team get feedback as the dolls were on shelf and like how they were performing in market? We saw all the sales every week. Yeah, we, we did have the access to yeah. the NPD sales results compared it to Barbary. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, and then your team is also tasked with coming up with different ways to kind of help keep the gem toy line relevant um, and on people's radars. So one such endeavor um, that's known to many gem fans is the truly outrageous gem audition contest, which we have a link <laughs> ready to show here. Show and tell audio visual. Yeah, here she goes. Lights on. You press the lights some more to be able to put down more. multiple cities across the country, it's quite another to self, 
send a letter. At the time, it's not an email. It's a letter with a blank, licked stamp and an envelope and a little girl's handwriting. And I mean, that seems far more honest sure. to review that than to talk to them. Absolutely. And we, we have some attendees here who um, did write some of those handwritten letters that your <laughs> department probably read back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I believe you have some other um, fun stories um, that weren't widely known about just kind of some of the behind the scenes stuff that your team. Um, well, there's something we want to come in some. I, I can't get fired anymore. There was, <laughs> there, was, there was a call we got from a little girl who, I don't, I don't remember her whole background, but it was a bit of a soft story. She didn't have friends. She was new in town. Could Jen come to her birthday party? Please, oh please, she's been crying all the time. Can she come? I'm like, oh my god, if we give this to the marketing department, it's gonna get like seven layers. That's why I left corporate America. Seven layers of approval for any one thing. And our team who got this letter went, let's just do it. When's the birthday party? <laughs> and I'm not the voice of Jim, but you know, I called and we all sang and we had Sang her birthday. I mean, there was no video, there was no chat, they didn't know I was a jam. <laughs> her friends thought that all of us were jam and the whole team, and we played the music in the background. I don't know. Oh. Wait, that seems very jam like of you. <laughs> The breaking the rules part. <laughs> um, any other brands that you worked on throughout your career that we would be familiar with? It's so at least for the story 30 million times. Oh, I, I, I spent many, many, many months. I mean, I then left the marketing department, but I spent many months of my life scratching and sniffing the butts of plastic ponies. <laughs> But wait, 
if any of you are in toys, what you would know is a line of toys I've created called B. Um, it's called B Toys. It's a targeted at oh, 40 top, feet of shelf space. That's all me. Top, B yeah. yeah. B Toys. So that was all me. And then I sold it to the top. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. It's a huge section of Target. It's an enormous section of Target, which is why I learned decisions get made solely on that. There are times when something would fall out and Target would say, we need something four inches by 28 inches. I'm like, a snake? <laughs> <laughs> like, it has to fill the planet. I many, many, many years working with in Minneapolis with the Todd um, product, and then I, and then I had to leave, so I let them have it. Um, but it was the it was the most successful thing I've done. Good for you. Any um, any other things um, that you want to chat through? Larger career path, personal endeavors, um, before we open it up just for larger Q and A. Um, no, I think I have to take back what I just said. The most successful piece of what I did in my professional life is that I insisted that Be Toys sell send 10 cents per toy to build schools around the world. So 10 cents per toy of every Be Toys. You are a real life jerk of Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, very cool. I've, we've gone through all of our questions. I'm sure we've got more in the audience or on Zoom. We'll start with Dana. Um, so I have a question about the conversations you would have with the moms about appropriateness of the gym cartoon and stuff because um, at a certain point, I think when the stingers came on, um, my mother said that we, I wasn't allowed to have Gem or watch Gem anymore because of the new band that was on there and all the moms were talking about how it's not age appropriate for children. Um, do you remember anything specific about that? I, I don't remember. So the question just for people um, who weren't able to hear, um, there was discussion about when the stingers came out and they were a little, um, a little rough around the edges and um, just larger feedback on that um, at the time. Or even, I think, you had mentioned, someone had mentioned that there was like rioting, or not rioting, but like picketing outside of Hasbro because of the misfits even at one point. There was, I don't remember specific conversations about the stingers. I do remember conversations about how we already had an undercurrent of opposition to the to the rock, to the outfits, to the painted hair, to the purple haired boy. To, so there was already an undercurrent of opposition and had we again internally made a mistake by rather than softening it, going stinger like, right? So if, if there was already a bit of a, ah, pause, I'm a mom in Kansas, I don't like this for my kid, that exacerbated it. But I don't remember, I didn't have any conversation specific with the moms. Davide? Yes, it's actually connected to this because I, I always thought and we often thought that the stingers were actually a little more reassuring doll, like the old blonde, uh, the new um, Hollywood jam doll was going to be more blonde than pink. So I thought they actually the stingers were made to, to be more mainstream. So this is quite surprising. I, I didn't know about that. I think and internally my, there was a lot of chaos and on the tail of them laying down on the shelf. There was a lot of, and I, again, I say this now from, not from the experience of the 26 year old, but from what I have now seen at Target and at Toys R Us. We were trying to save it. So there was a lot of throw spaghetti at the wall and see what works things happening. Let's make the stingers. Let's make her look more like Barbie and take the pink off. There's a doll out there that looks so Barbie-like. It's like, what, she's not Jen anymore. Right, let's reduce the cost. Let's put more outfits in, let's put less outfits in. There was a lot of trying to do things because she had serious champions in the house that didn't want to lose her. But there was nothing we could do. Again, this is my, there's nothing other than retooling the whole brand to fit the 
standardized national shelving units um, that, that could have saved her. You know, I think she could have survived if she had been exactly as she was an inch shorter. Mm, very interesting. I, I wanted to follow up on that. So the things that you could not control were retooling the entire brand because of the expense or having Toys R Us adjust their shelf height for your doll. But one of the things that maybe you could have possibly thought of is your messaging was all in, in the cartoon on the show. Was there any way that you could have maybe come up with a concept to explain why she was lying down like Jem in the hallway, larger than life, so large she doesn't fit? <laughs> <laughs> So with grandma, aunt, whoever's buying a birthday gift, they're not seeing her. Yeah. They're not seeing her. Or the doll, they're not seeing her face, they're not seeing her clothes. A girl walks down the aisle and there's an option between, they can't read, a pink right. box that means nothing to them, or a doll that's standing up right. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. I, I heard a rumor that one of the reasons that Jim was physically bigger than Barbie was that her physical size was supposed to be a metaphor for how she was going to top Barbie in the fashion doll market. <laughs> Are I think there was definitely conversations. I wasn't there when that decision got made, when the size decision got made. There were definite conversations about like, we're gonna beat her because we're gonna beat Barbie because we be. It was not, I never got the bigger part as much as because we're better, because the shape is normal. Right? Um, I don't know if, I would have loved for her to have beat her just because she's bigger. We were competing with decades of hand-me-down clothing and knowledge of who the other one was. Um, I remember a conversation about whether she could be, yeah. if she sits down and she's in a box, can we get in the same Barbie height packaging Two up. It was impossible. That was impossible. No. Stefan, thank you. Um, Jam was the the doll line was introduced in Europe at the same time as in the U.S. Did you do any research how it would be overseas? If that would be. I was part of any of the international group. Uh, the question was um, what was involved with research for um, international merchandise. I, I, did not, I, mean, I don't know if they did the research there or here, or if they just said, that, hey, we have the tooling, let's just sell it overseas. It's interesting, too, because we've seen over the years the different merchandise that was available in different markets. So markets overseas that merchandise wasn't available here and vice versa. So a lot of, a lot of decisions were made. Christine? I hope you get a sense the relevant gem as a brand has been to us and still is now. Um, I know, if you yeah. could refresh and reboot the brand, what concepts would you see and who would you like to reach? So just to paraphrase the question, um, just a quick nod to you know how beloved the Jen brand is and what it means to everyone um, and what her thoughts are and if she could revamp um, the Jen toy line or brand right now, what, what her thoughts are on that, which things would work. Okay, I think if, especially in the tail of the Barbie movie now, I think if if I had a magic wand, I would relaunch her right now, but I would make her fit those shelves, because now those shelves are entrenched even another 20 years, right? I don't think the story needs to change. I think. <laughs> Stopped, you did, you did Maxi with the right size, but she didn't last much longer. Was it because the concept was different from Jim? 
So just a quick paraphrase, um, right after Jem finished, we had Maxi, which was the right size needed for shelf placements, but it didn't last um, as long that long. Maxi is too Barbie like. Right? This is just like this is a knockoff of Barbie. This had its own story to tell. Yes. Yeah. You know that that uh, makes the thing me uh, it makes me think about the Mac and PC uh, mm -hmm. fight. Mac yeah. it was better, but it was a close architecture. And PC was an open architecture, even if it was more or less different quality because it was all spread. Well, if Hasbro owned its own stores, if Hasbro could have done, again, Magic Wand Lynn, if Hasbro could have done what American Girl did with American Girl before American Girl sold to Mattel, and Hasbro owned destination stores with little rock booths and karaoke stands for little girls to sing in, this would have been wildly successful. You would have not needed Toys R Us, but Toys R Us was the only distribution channel at the time. Or the biggest. Mm -hmm. Any other, Holly? Yeah. Um, we have bad lines like Monster High, Rainbow High. How have you, in question your girls even, how have those dolls maybe changed, you know, the place of gem and kind of doll history? So just to repeat for um, people in the back and on Zoom, so obviously we've got um, lines now like Monster High and Bratz and Equestria, um, Equestria? Rain Rainbow High. Rainbow High, um, yeah, just what her thoughts are on how that might shape um, the general image. Legacy or just like, like, yeah, whatever that means. I think it's a new verse. I think yeah. Jen informed yeah, those yeah. brands, yeah. but the country changed. Yeah. The world changed. Yeah. It's a more accepting place. I go back to saying there's kids at the bus stop. You know, there's boys with long hair, there's boys with a ponytail, there's purple hair on. It's different now. I... So it's like another missed opportunity, basically. Unless somebody was brave enough to bring it back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm brave and financially stable. <laughs> because now you can go direct to mom. I mean, now you don't need Toys R Us, you don't need Target, you don't need, you don't need Hasbro even. Right? Somebody with money could, the website, the distribution, all of that can just go direct. No different than Warby Parker glasses or Bomba Soft. You could go direct to moms and girls now. You don't need Target. In fact, Target is its own. Let's ask you Giant hairball. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as someone here wins the lottery, we get to the bus and we'll make it happen. Um, Allie, there was a question in the back. I do believe, I mean, I know you did everything you could to save Jim. Oh, I had no control. I, <laughs> <was trying. laughs> I, know, I know, but given 40 years of hindsight, are there any decisions that your department made that you would have done any differently? Or do you think that everything that you guys no, I wish we had taken the damn doll in its box out to the field and tried it. <laughs> like, um, how much specific decisions that market research on that? We were just taking girls and moms directives and then, I mean, sometimes the design department might, might have toned down an outfit a little bit because the outfit we presented was not very well received or too, I think the boa got removed because sometimes those are cost decisions. It's not even input decisions. A lot of what I did was incredibly subjective, right? We would go talk to moms, talk to girls, read their letters, and then talk to the design team and say, this is the input, now take it or leave it. Right? We had no control over the take it or leave it. I guess that's kind of the burden of marketing is they give you a product and, I mean, you inform them, but what you end up marketing isn't really... Oh, often it's not. Yeah. That's why I then made my own one. <laughs> awesome, by the way. Um, Love the learning smith so much. Yeah. John Murray? Yeah, you talk about moms and girls. Did you do any research with boys, little None, boys? None, zero. Zero little boys. Zero, not and, a one. Any not letters? A dad or yeah, we got letters from boys. Really? Yeah. What can you tell us about the boy, the boy feedback? Um, I don't remember many because they were not many. Right. 
I do remember the conversations being such an anomaly when one did come in from a boy because it was so rare. Um, like you loved the music. I remember one letter from, it's actually a group of boys that was starting a band that wanted to know why there was not a band of boys. Right? Why is he all by himself? And I have that person here. <laughs> why is he all by himself? Remember that, but they were rare. Do you um, remember getting any letters from overseas? No, Aww. not in my mind. No. We, we did. I mean, they might honestly sometimes the letters were open, right? So I don't know. Do they do research with boys now with these doll toys? Do you know? I don't know. Um, that's a very important question to ask. You could ask Hasbro. I will, yeah. I think we should ask <laughs> yeah. Hasbro. And I think they should ask. They should now. I mean, I, okay, I remember being at Target when there was the whole boys' toy. I, I mean, I was selling preschool toys, right? So the preschool toys were not boys' toys and girls' toys. Right. The boys' toys had and the girls' toys had. Um, and I remember Target conversations. were like, do we stop this? Is the Batat our generation doll going to always be pink down the girl's toy aisle and do, can we move some things around and as Lego a boy's toy or a girl? So they are talking about it. I don't know that I've yet seen in a Target store that they have changed the labeling. They might not be now. I don't know. The what? It's the certainly colored It's still color-coded. It's still color -coded. Yeah, they call it the pink aisle, right? Yes. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier, yeah. Do you have a question over here? Oh, I was curious to hear more about uh, your values. You've mentioned inclusivity, and we've made so much progress socially towards equality, and if you were to bring Jen back now, I'm curious how you might see that manifested. Is there a value that moms and girls are looking for that they're not getting? How does that, how does that come into the conversation in 2023? Inclusivity is different than it was in the 80s. <laughs> it, it is, um, and it's, it's, sorry, just to repeat the question back um, with, her career path and really striving for equality and inclusivity and a lot of like the community times that you've had um, with your projects, um, kind of how she sees that um, potentially being manifested today with Jen, if Jen were to come back yeah, or, or in general. What is, what is the value you want? The value that she yeah. wants to portray, where she sees that happening. I am not CEO of Mattel or Hasbro. <laughs> um, but I, you guys have known me for about 15 minutes. If it's not obvious what my values are, um, I can say that we currently work on Chica Project and Amplify Latinx. I mean, the stuff we're currently doing is all about inclusivity. I pushed the cat to make the first Alejandra doll because they had never had in our generation. They didn't need, and in fact, in conversations with Jim and Danny Vitale, mm -hmm. told them that they could not use the exact same tooling for their white doll mm -hmm. as their black doll and just color it. Mm -hmm. So right. my values, yeah. if I was more in control of that world, would, but I think, I think moms are seeking inclusivity now at the same time, I would say, as there are enormous pushes in the country to go exactly in the opposite direction. Right, to go like, no, we're not going to be woke. No, we're not going to teach Anne Frank. No, it's just crazy times we're living in right now, so don't get me on my political soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's room for toy lines to go direct to moms, right? And, and sell online in ways that were not available before, and whether that is environmentally conscious wooden toys that aren't decimating forests. Um, honestly, today I would have a hard time making toys in China. Like, I no longer, I got out of the target world for personal reasons, but I would have a very hard time today going back to corporate America to make plastic toys in China. Mm -hmm. I, I know more than I did that. And I visited a lot of factories. Mm -hmm. Wow. Any other questions? Um, I've got one over here. Yeah, um, were you, <clears throat> oh my, were you working at Hasbro around 
2005-06, where they uh, tried to uh, reboot Jam, but then they kind of used that budget for the pussy cat. I was no longer there. Yeah. That's funny because I mean they they stepped into another big hole when they with pussy and dolls and then parents said uh no and then they they didn't even have it. But they probably got slapped down twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to know, in the last few years we've seen some licensing, we've, we've seen integrity with a new line, we've seen a lot of different products licensed with the gem uh, branding and just from what you've seen in the last couple of years, do you think that this is testing the waters, or is this just giving us something? Uh, what do you, what's your take on what we've seen come back recently? Who owns the gym license right now? That's my ignorance. So Hasbro still owns it. And they're giving it to Integrity to use. I look at that Integrity line and don't think it's for girls. Like it's not a toy. It's not a toy. It's a put, put it on a shelf. Might as well be buying a porcelain yeah. Madame yeah. Alexander doll kind of thing. Yeah. So um, Hasbro's missing an opportunity in in a, in giving a girl an option at the five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight range. And that price point too. And that price point. Yeah. yeah. They're not giving it away. They're Getting money for that. Well, they get yeah, 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 yeah. Sean? What's it like working with your daughter? I'm so lucky. <laughs> She's incredibly talented. You guys can find her website. She's incredibly talented. And we weren't always working together. Um, but she's probably watched me. I mean, I created the toys out of the living room of my house. There was toys everywhere. There's Hong Kong boxes and disgusting brown packaging. Piling our dining I took over our dining room. Um, and she went with me to Kenya to build a school. Oh, she's. Do any of you guys know the silly piano that's got this Cheshire cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's her voice in there. The kid who we hired in the studio to come meow in a two full scale couldn't do it. He he just wouldn't do it, and we couldn't afford. Like I was doing this out of my house. I was like, oh fuck it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm meowing. Meow 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 meow. That's me. <laughs> What's it like working with your mom? Um, I, even though I didn't know it at the time when I was little, I didn't know that I was getting experience at the age of six yeah. in design until I was old enough to understand that I was ahead of my peers when I decided to go into design. So I remember the conversations at the dining room table of like, can you draw the snake. Like there's toys that I did the concept drawings to as a child that obviously then a product development person made better. <laughs> but I remember the conversations of like, are we going to put all the toys inside the drum to save space instead of having the drum and then the toys on the outside. Um, so once I went into design, she, it was nice to have someone in my corner who had already done it, because a lot of the time when people go into art, they get shot down, like, oh, you, what are you gonna do? How, how are you gonna make a living, yeah. right? Yeah. So, for example, in high school, I had a math teacher who was actually horrid. <laughs> and he had everyone write down what they wanted to be when they grew up on a sticky note and put it on the whiteboard, and he read them out loud. And for some people, he like praised them, was like, you're gonna do great. He read mine when I said I wanted to be a designer. He told me I was gonna be $100,000 in debt and never amount to anything. <laughs> and then at my parent-teacher conference, my mom walked in and was like, 
Hi, I'm a designer. <laughs> Although we had never worked together, we, like, I moved home, right? What are you going to do with your time? And my mom had started a nonprofit called Loose Lights, which you guys can Google. And it was the 10 year anniversary, and it, we did get you know, a really crappy website that went up, like, super fast. And she was like, What are we going to do for the 10th anniversary? Like, it's COVID. We can't have a party, we can't throw a fundraiser. Like, what are we going to do? And it was Friday. Anniversary was Monday, and I was like, "We're gonna build a website." And she was like, "How are we gonna launch a website in 36 hours?" And I was like, "We can launch a website in 36 <laughs> hours. We can do it, I swear." And after that, I quit my corporate job and started working there. Oh. Oh. Um, the here at the organization was Luke's uh, Light. Luke's Lights. Luke's Lights. Um, we don't want to get too much into it right now, but I would encourage everyone to look it up online. Um, and also, if you're able to, um, where can people find you online? Your website, right. your portfolio, social Doodle media? Doodle.com. Doodle do. Doodle do. D O O D L E D O. Dot com. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not very many diesel on the planet either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So doodledo.com is your, your website for yeah, the two of you is what you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're relatively new. I wouldn't have guessed that with everything you guys have going on. Um, so doodle, doodledo.com and uh, Luke's Lights if you want to check out either of those websites. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> any, any other questions from the audience or on Zoom? Nothing on Zoom. Who's on Zoom? Oh, we have fans, we have fans coming in from Australia, Malaysia, Malaysia. we have fans coming in from the UK. Cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're good for now. We're going to see you later, right? We, um, yeah, it's been a pleasure having you. And you're going to be able to stay around for our um, final guest panel and our mm -hmm. autograph session. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. So there will be a round if you want to come on. Yeah. You want to learn more about the, the yeah. scent with the ponies? <laughs> <laughs> Gracias.